Welcome to Channel 8's election coverage. My name is Paul Langan. Today we have with us Mel Hurtick of the National Party of Canada. Mel, welcome to the show. Great pleasure to be here. Well, Mel, listen, for some of the people in the Guelph area, they might not know a bit about Mel Hurtick the man. Can you tell us a little bit about your history? Well, uh, let's see, I was born and raised in Edmonton. I was a bookseller for 17 years. At one time I had uh, the largest bookstore in Canada. Not as, quite as nice as the wonderful bookstore I was in today in, in Guelph. Oh, the bookshelf. Yeah, excellent yeah. store. Um, then I became a publisher for 17 years. We started the first ever English language national book publishing company in Canada outside the city of Toronto and it grew into the fourth largest book publishing company in Canada. Um, one of the big projects we were involved in was the Canadian Encyclopedia, mm -hmm. which uh, involved 3,000 people from all across Canada, from every province and every territory. It was a multi-million dollar project that took six years, and then the Junior Encyclopedia of Canada. I then sold my publishing company in 1991, and I became an author. And my very first book, The Betrayal of Canada, became a number one best-selling book. I remember saying to my wife, as we drove back from British Columbia, where I finished the last chapter, I was saying to her, boy, if this book were ever to get on any bestseller list for one week, I would be really happy. Yeah. Well, it was on Canadian bestseller list for, for nine months, and it's now in its eighth printing. And then we published, when we started our new political party, the National Party of Canada, mm -hmm. we published A New and Better Canada, which is the manifesto of our party, mm -hmm. and that has been on the bestseller list now for over three months. So. I have a, a triple career. Well, how did um, how did you go from the betrayal of Canada, which uh, I bought actually, and uh, that's how I heard about Mel Hurtick. Mm -hmm. How did you go from uh, Mel Hurtick, the author of Betrayal of Canada, to Mel Hurtick, let's get a party together? Well, we didn't do this in a frivolous way at all, uh, Paul. We looked at it very carefully because it's an enormous task to start a new, broadly based democratic uh, political party, especially with the strictures that we have put forward, that is, we do not accept any donations from corporations mm -hmm. and we do not accept any donations from trade unions or special interest groups. Uh, it makes it a little bit more difficult. There's only one reason. There's a whole bunch of policies that we have. We've mm -hmm. clearly articulated those in our policy book, mm -hmm. A New and Better Canada. Mm -hmm. But uh, if I had to zero in on one particular reason why we've started this party, it's pretty mm -hmm. simple. We think we're losing our country. We think if Canada continues to go in the direction that it has been going for the last uh, eight and a half years under the current government, if we continue to deindustrialize, if we continue to move our jobs away from southern Ontario, for example, to Mississippi and Georgia and Tennessee and the Maquiladoras in Mexico, mm -hmm. if we continue to abandon our social programs, if we continue to uh, dismantle the east-west programs and get involved more and more in north-south, Mm -hmm. We do not think that there's going to be a country called Canada a few more years down the road. And there's one other point. The graph of foreign ownership in Canada uh, is now going uphill on a graph that looks like this. There are 33 entire industries in Canada now foreign owned and controlled. In the United States there isn't one. In Germany there isn't one. In Japan there isn't one and our foreign ownership goes uphill every single day. So, mm -hmm. you know, we say we've got to do something important to turn the country around, and that's why we started the National Party. Did you also feel that you couldn't work within the frameworks of the existing party? Did you examine that aspect, say, could we get our change if we became a member of the Liberals, per se? Paul, we did that. We began meeting in Winnipeg in January of 1991, and we looked at the alternative. Should we all join the Liberal Party? Should we all join the NDP Party? Mm -hmm. Should we get involved in strategic voting? Mm -hmm. And for a variety of reasons, we rejected all three of those uh, we, as not being practical. Uh, we saw the Liberal Party of Jean Chrétien surrounded by people from big business uh, in his office and moving very significantly to the right on the political spectrum. And not only that, the key people in relation to trade, uh, Mr. McLaren now and Paul Martin Jr. are people who are very much continentalists, that is people who think the same way many people in the Conservative Party have been thinking. So we didn't think that there would be a significant chance to have any influence there with the Liberal Party. We then watched the New Democratic Party uh, descend from 41% to 40% to 35%. Yes. To th they're down at 12% now. So we, we've tried to start something very highly principled. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul, we're going to 
concentrate on morality in mm -hmm. ethics and mm -hmm. integrity in government, openness in democracy. We will have the best Freedom of Information Act of any nation anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. We're going to get rid of patronage in Pork Barrel in Ottawa once and for all. We're going to get rid of the lobbying industry in Ottawa once and for all. We're going to return democracy to the people of Canada. And those democratic reforms that we're talking about go well beyond what anybody else in the country is talking about. Well, let's go into detail a little bit on some of these. Uh, one you just brought up and uh, that's uh, an issue that people are starting to learn about is the role of the lobby, uh, lobbyist in mm -hmm. Ottawa. Maybe you can uh, tell us the National Party or your own feelings on this issue of lobbyists in government. Well, it's incredible. You walk down the main street of the city or the main street of Edmonton where I come from or, in, or Young Street in Toronto, and I don't think there's one in a thousand people who understand the way the lobbying industry operates. A friend of mine in Toronto recently said, Mel, there's no way you can get a contract anymore in, in Ottawa without going through one of the conservative lobbying companies. Mm -hmm. These are the old boys network of the conservative party, the people who used to work in the prime minister's office and others as well. And uh, <clears throat> they receive fees of uh, $3,000 a month, $4,000 a month, five or $6,000 a month per company that they represent. And incredibly, now listen to this, because this is terribly important to this whole discussion. Incredibly, in testimony before a Commons Committee recently, the man who edits the magazine called Lobby Digest, in other words, mm -hmm. he's the best expert on the lobbying industry in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. His name is Sean Moore. He said this, the reason that the lobbyists don't lobby mm -hmm. members of parliament is because members of parliament are not important in the decision-making process. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, in testimony, in cross-examination, he said, well, of course, the lobbyists are much more powerful mm -hmm. than, uh, than uh, the members of parliament. So why even have elections if that's the case? Mm -hmm. We want to get rid of that nonsense. One of the things, the first things that the National Party will do after we're elected in the fall is we will uh, bring in legislation to disallow the expensing of payments to lobbyists, and we're going to get rid of the lobbying industry pretty quickly. That's a very interesting point. Actually, I did have a chance to catch that TV special with, with the hearings with that uh, mm -hmm. particular editor, and it was amazing. Pretty fact. distressing, yeah. right? It, it made you wonder what, why you voted, actually. Well, yeah. in terms of, uh, this isn't what democracy, no. and I guess that's one of the key things that we're emphasizing is we want to return democracy to people. We want elections to be people intensive, not money intensive. We don't want big foreign corporations to come in the way they did in 1988, led by American Express and IBM and the rest of them, and buy an election. That has very little to do with democracy. The United States would never let that happen. The United States would never let big Japanese corporations come in and intervene in the American election campaign. And we shouldn't allow that to happen either. Most other countries ban the participation of foreign companies in their elections and again that'll be one of the first pieces of legislation we will pass. Okay. Can we talk a little bit then maybe about some of the policies of the National <coughs> Party? I know we've been hinting at them. Um, for instance, uh, taxation. Uh, what are your views on taxation as far as uh, changing them perhaps uh, in Canada? Well, I have to laugh when I listen to Kim Campbell and Jean Charest and the others talk about uh, what they're going to do. They, they never mention one of the most important changes that has to be made in the tax system in Canada, and that is the average individual in Canada, the average person watching this program right this minute, pays way too much tax in this country compared to the citizens of other developed nations around the world. But the big corporations do not pay their fair share of taxes. If the big corporations in Canada just paid the same average, mm -hmm. I don't want them to pay more, say at the same average as the big corporations and all the other major industrialized nations, we would then be able to <clears throat> lower personal income tax in Canada by between $3 billion and $8 billion a year, depending on what the profit year was mm -hmm. at that particular year. And we also, we also definitely have got to close these, these tax havens where wealthy Canadians are sending money to Bermuda, to a dummy corporation, mm -hmm. buying Ontario Hydro bonds, repatriating the, div the interest payments, then sending dividends back to Canada, totally 100% tax-free. We've got to do something about big... ...leader of the National Party of Canada. Mel, before the break, we were talking a little bit about free trade. Maybe we can talk a little bit more about the impact on free trade in Canada. Well, uh, Paul, I don't want to bore you with a whole bunch of numbers, but let me give you just a few of them. In the 
four years before the free trade agreement went into effect, we Canadians created 1,024,000 brand new jobs in this country. In the first four years of the free trade agreement, that is 1989 to 1992 inclusive, we didn't exactly create a million and 24,000 new jobs. We decreased employment over that four year period by a total of 246,000 jobs. Now this is a country where just to handle the young people who are leaving college or university or technical school across the country and the new immigrants, we've got to create almost a quarter of a million jobs every year. Uh, a more meaningful statistic though perhaps is this one. In the four years before the free trade agreement went into effect, new investment in this country increased by 38.5 percent. Mm -hmm. But in the first four years of the free trade agreement, it declined by 3.2 percent and it's going to decline again this year. Well, look, this is a country with 1.6 million people unemployed, another 600,000 people, mostly women, working in very insecure, uh, poor paid uh, part-time jobs. And these are people who desperately want full-time jobs. We've got hundreds of thousands of others who've dropped out of the labor force. How are you ever going to put people back to work if the investment isn't showing up in this economy and instead the investment is being moved down to, uh, to Tennessee and Virginia and, and uh, North Carolina and to the Maquiladores in Mexico? So those are just a few of the economic indicators. There's quite a few others. And for people who say, well, gee, Mr. Herdig, it's part of the worldwide recession, um, if they would phone our toll-free number, and I'll give it to you if I may, 1-800-565-8673, and ask for a sheet of comparison showing how Canada has done compared to the G7 nations or the OECD nations mm -hmm. or the European Community nations, we'd be happy to send that out to them. Well, those statistics are quite alarming. I, no wonder they don't get out of Ottawa. I'm glad you're delivering them up to them. Uh, another thing you hear a lot about is the debt and deficit. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, and to me, it's a confusing thing about the debt and that. Uh, does the National Party have any way of looking at the debt to try to control it? Uh, well, look, anybody who fails to uh, tackle the debt and the deficit is just dreaming because we are, because of the terrible economic policies of the Liberals who left the $206 billion uh, deficit, and then the Tories came in in 1984-85, Michael Wilson said, we're going to be the most uh, responsible government in the history of Canada in terms of the deficit. The deficit is $34.6 billion, and we can't afford that. <laughs> That was back in 1984, the deficit this year is exactly $34.6 billion and the Tories have piled on another $257 billion worth of debt. So now we have this enormous internal debt and this huge external debt owing uh, to other people around the world. If we continue to go that way, it will not be long before the International Monetary Fund steps in and takes control of our economy, whether we like it or not. So we've got to do something about that. However, the way the Tories and the Reform Party want to do it is the wrong way and in my opinion the way the NDP want to do it is, is the opposite wrong way. With the Tories and the Reform Party it's slash, cut, burn, mm -hmm. hack and destroy what generations of Canadians have built up in terms of our wonderful, compassionate, uh, universal social programs that Canadians have long so admired our health care system. In terms of the NDP, well, their strategy paper that Audrey McLaughlin released about a month ago calls for an increase in taxes of $55.2 billion. We, so, we say, the National Party of Canada says neither of those strategies is viable. What we're going to do is put forward a full employment strategy and in June, we will produce a policy document showing, number one, how we're going to put Canadians back to work, Number two, where we're going to get the money. Number three, what we're going to do about the debt and the deficit. And it'll be an infinitely wiser economic program than anybody is talking about in this country. Well, I hate to keep going on issues, but that's why we're having the, the talk. How about uh, GST? That's another, uh, has been in the past, definitely an issue that affects a lot of people. Uh, well, the GST is a very unfair and very expensive form of taxation. Uh, in a modern society, you should have what is called a fair and progressive tax system. And a fair and progressive tax system is based on the ability to pay. Uh, a person who earns $2 million a year should not pay the same tax rate as somebody who pays $20,000 a year, who earns $20,000 a year. So that's what the GST is all about, and it's terribly unfair. It hurts low-income people, it hurts uh, middle-income people, 
and uh, we would like to replace that with a fair uh, means of taxation. And we think there's a whole bunch of ways in which we can recapture tax revenue from the uh, very wealthy in society, but not in a punitive manner, by the way. Mm -hmm. Again, I stress, I would just simply like them to pay effective tax rates that are similar to other developed nations around the world. Not anymore. Now, don't ever be fooled, Paul, by uh, stuff you read in the Globe and Mail or the Financial Post about, well, these are the tax rates in Canada. The tax rates mean nothing. What you've always got to zero in on is the effective rate of tax paid. Mm -hmm. Because you see, there's so many exemptions, so many mm -hmm. loopholes, so many ways in, to get out of paying taxes, that the actual effective tax rate that the big corporations pay and the well-to-do pay is well below the nominal tax rates. Let's talk locally, Mel. Um, you got the National Party, You've, you're coming into Guelph here uh, to try to get, is there an organization working in Guelph trying to get a, a, organi a writing going? We've just started a, a writing organization. We're very new, we're only four months old, and boy, that's why anybody who's interested in politics should come in and get involved in our party, because you can come in and get involved at any level you want, on the policy committee or on the executive or whatever you want. We will be running uh, good candidates in this area, not maybe, but for sure. Uh, I don't know when the nominating meetings will be held, but probably sometime in June. Unlike the Liberal parties, we're not saying, step aside, you've sold 3,500 uh, memberships in Toronto, but step aside because we're going to appoint the, the former mayor of Toronto, or you, sir, you're black and uh, you can't run for us because you're black in, in the province of Quebec. And So we're not going to do that sort of thing. We're going to have uh, open nominating meetings. To vote at one of our nominating meetings, you're going to have to be a member 30 days in advance. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're finding, Paul, and this is quite interesting, is that about 20% of the people who are coming to us are coming from the NDP, mostly in Ontario and the four western provinces. We okay. just had a former NDP cabinet minister in Saskatchewan uh, just circulate a seven-page letter in Saskatchewan explaining mm -hmm. why he was leaving the NDP and coming to our party. 30% uh, Liberals, uh, the, our, our Toronto organization is headed by a former Liberal, our mm -hmm. BC organization headed by former Liberals. But the most exciting thing of all, and this is what I find terribly exhilarating, mm -hmm. is that about half the people who are coming to us have never been involved in politics before. And that's tremendously exciting and, and they're, they're saying, hey, this is interesting, this is new, and we want to get involved in the future of our country. Well, it sounds very refreshing and a very hands-on approach to a lot of people that haven't been involved in politics before. Um, maybe at the end of the show we can uh, put up a card to where people want to get involved locally <coughs> right. uh, can call. I guess the big question out there, uh, what's the chances you feel of, of winning some seats in the, in the election coming up? Well, when we started uh, on November 21st of last year, the fourth anniversary of the free trade election, we said that if everything went well we would run 50 candidates and you have to have 50 candidates to have your name on the ballot and to issue tax receipts as well. Uh, Paul, the response has been so fantastic from across the country that we will be running at least 200 candidates. Wow. And, and uh, wonderful men and women. And another thing that really appeals to me is an awful lot of young people are joining our party. You go to most political meetings and you end up seeing a sea of people with hair my color. <laughs> but we've got a terrific number of young people in the party. And I'm saying to these young people, just as I said at, uh, at uh, Laurier at a University the other day, I'm saying, look, I want you to come and take our party over within five years. I want you to take it over. And they're finding that really interesting, and, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Do you think you'll have the chance to run a candidate in each province? Is that a goal? Uh oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Unlike the Reform Party, we will be running in Quebec. We will be running Francophone candidates in Quebec. We'll be running allophone candidates in Quebec, and we'll be running anglophone candidates in Quebec. We've already got a wonderful francophone farmer and a wonderful francophone author mm -hmm. that I think have got real good chances of winning seats in the next election, and an anglophone lawyer in Montreal that I think has got a good chance of winning a seat. So we'll, we'll run in uh, all ten provinces and in the territories as well, for sure. Mm -hmm. Listen, Mel, I'd like to thank you very much for coming on the pleasure. show. Thank you it's for having me. It's been my pleasure also. Uh, you've been watching uh, Channel 8. We've been talking to Mel Hertig, the leader of the...